Okay, first of all, before anything else, I think you can probably tell English is not my first language. And it's already very hard for me to talk in my actual first language. So, I'm really sorry if you can understand me very well. I, I will try to add subtitles to this video because I really think my English pronunciation is pretty bad. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Second of all, this video will contain spoilers of Sam and Max Levels Playhouse. And I know there is a lot of new Sam and Max fans lately, especially because of the remasters, so I don't want to ruin the best game of the franchise to them. If you haven't played it yet, don't watch this video. If you haven't played it and don't have intentions to, I think you should still pause the video. The Devil's Playhouse is my favorite point and click game, and it really is a very amazing and special experience that I don't want to ruin to anyone. But yeah, you have been warned. There are spoilers, be careful. Now let's start the video. Sam and Max The Devil's Playhouse is a very special game. It's completely different from anything else this franchise has ever done. It's dark, it's serious, it's emotional. All of that while still being Sam and Max, still remaining absurd and funny. I think if you have played the game, you know how good it can be. There is a reason why fans of the franchise constantly talk about it, more than anything else. It's a genuine good game, and it's very impactful. It changes the perspective of these characters completely. It makes you think, it makes you care, and my favorite thing of all, it makes you overanalyze. You will think about this game for weeks, months, or if you're like me, you'll probably think about it for the rest of your life. But believe it or not, I'm not here to analyze season 3. That will have to wait for another video, a way longer one. That will probably never happen because I'm not good at making videos and I actually need to buy a mic and I don't think that's happening anytime soon. So yeah, no, I'm probably only making this video. Let, let's see how it goes, but it, it will probably not go very well. The reason why I'm here is to talk about the ending, just the ending. And why make a whole video about that? Because I'm literally always thinking about it. But also because it's good actually good, a really amazing ending that remains one of my favorites of all time. So let me explain why. Max is so powerful now, soon he won't even need a partner. If it makes you feel any better, I promise to take you with me when I merge with the Godhead. I think we can all agree that the center of the Devil's Playhouse is Sam and Max's relationship. I know that's not really shocking, they are the two protagonists after all, whose names are literally in the title of the franchise. But just like everything else in this game, this time is a bit different from the usual. Instead of the usual shenanigans, this game actually explores their relationship. How much they need each other, how much they help each other, how much they care about each other. And it's done both in a subtle way and in a direct way. Sure, we see how Sam is affected by Max's quote-unquote death, but he never really talks about it with Max after that. Not even a small comment about it, they just move on. Sure, we see how Sam tries to save Max in the last episode, but before the ending, do we really get a very emotional moment where he talks about how much he misses Max, or how much this situation is affecting him? Not really. Sure, there's some comments, some dialogue, but not really a scene per se. I think if this was any other franchise, they would make a scene like that, but not here. And I don't think it's because they are trying to not make the game super depressing because like I said, it still gets really sad. They just don't talk about it. For a franchise where one of the main running gags is how much they over explain a situation, Sam will over explain situations they find themselves in whatever he can. But he won't even mention the fact that he thought his best friend died for a few hours of his life. One of Sam and Max's main things is that they're constantly talking to each other. They always have a joke to tell, to make each other laugh. It's familiar to them, and it's familiar to the audience, which is something that Devil's Playhouse really makes you appreciate, because for at least two episodes this dynamic changes. Sam and Max get separated, or at least something in their reality changes, that prevents them from really having their usual conversations. And let me tell you, it feels weird. It feels empty, it feels like something is missing. One of the reasons why Beyond the Alley of the Dolls is my favorite Sam and Max episode is because while everything else is going wrong, their relationship is back to normal. 
It feels great to see the duo together again and to have the option to talk to Max like usual. Not talking to Max for a long period of time actually feels lonely. Every time I replay the last episode, it just feels wrong that Max is just not there. Season 3 makes the player miss Max, miss some of Max's conversations, miss their jokes together, miss their relationship, which is probably how Sam and Max themselves are feeling at the moment as well. It's kind of incredible how Sam and Max makes me care about the characters better than 80% of other games. You care about these characters because they have made you laugh, but now that they are not doing that, you want them to be okay. You care about them. You want Sam to have Max back because you know he cares about him a lot. You want Max back because he's a funny little guy that you can see has gone through too many horrible things this season, and they're not even his fault. Sam and Max deserve a happy ending, and you expect a happy ending, because this is still a Sam and Max game. What could they do? Max? There is an area in this episode that it doesn't serve any purpose for the puzzle mechanics, but there is a line of dialogue that has always stuck with me and that is meaningful for the whole game. Keep it together, Super Bowl. Sam will be able to save the day. He always does. Sam is always fixing the problems and mysteries of each episode. Max is there to help, of course, but Sam is still the brain of the team. Uh, at least most of the time. And while there were some problems to deal with in this season, the main priority for Sam seemed to be wanting Max to be okay, protect him from all the dangers that surrounded him. And the thing is, he failed. Sam always finds a solution for everything, with Max by his side, but the one person he cared about the most was the one he couldn't save. When Sam sees the explosion in the sky with no music in the background, just pure silence, that's probably how he's feeling at the moment. If that didn't hurt enough, they give us a false sense of hope that Max could come back. And that would have probably happened if this was a regular comedy game. But there is one thing you have to make clear in every Sam and Max piece of media. Sam and Max's relationship is important. This conclusion will have been weak and average. That's not what Sam and Max's relationship is. So that doesn't happen. And so one of my favorite ending sequences begins. I have talked about how important the constant dialogue of these franchises. They need to make jokes all the time, they need to talk all the time, there is rarely a silent moment. This whole ending, however, is really quiet. When everybody learns that Max can be safe, no one says anything to Sam, they just look at him sad. Even characters that seem like they didn't care much about him. Sam doesn't say anything either, which is rare for him. He simply walks away. The player is probably left thinking, huh, this is weirdly sad, is Max actually just dead? No way, they are going to fix it in a moment. And suddenly, the credits roll. I can express how fast my soul leaves my body every time I play this ending, especially the first time. They really make you think, everything is going to be okay. Here is the random solution to this problem, like some DreamWorks movie or something. But no, that random solution doesn't work. Max is just... gone. And when the credits roll, it's when it all hits you. This is the ending, that's, that's it. Sam is alone. All the effort to save Sam's little body didn't work out at the end. You can only see Sam walking, saying nothing, looking at nothing while the track name Letting Go plays in the background. And then there is the post credit scene. Sam looks at the Statue of Liberty, the place where he lost Max forever, and takes his hat off in a sign of respect and love for him. Then you know what happens. Sam. The music in the background, when Sam recognizes the time-traveling machine and hearing Max's voice again, 
Cheers every time. No ending comparison. Sam finally hugs Max. Thank God. We've been waiting for that. The LGBT plus community has waited for this moment. Max vaguely explains why he's here. He pretty much also lost his Sam. Though, for some reason, he doesn't seem very affected by it. And how does Sam reply? It was horrible! Sam and Max don't talk about emotions. Sam must have gone through the worst week of their lives, and you will think that they will probably need to talk about it. Just like how they talk about everything else. But they don't. And yes, I know we all like to think they are repressing their emotions. And they probably are. But I don't think that's it. I don't think Max doesn't care and that's why he seems like he's not taking this seriously. I don't even think it's because he wants to pretend he doesn't care. I think it's because the way he and Sam always talk to each other is through jokes. So in that moment, he thinks they should just have a normal conversation, even if the situation is way more serious than others. It's what he expects. Max doesn't know what happened in this timeline, which makes you think, was he expecting another Max? Does he need Sam so much that he was willing to go to a completely different dimension just to talk to him again, even if he still had his original Max? We don't know. But we do know that when he sees how sad Sam looks, is when he puts the pieces together. And he realizes he can just joke around and pretend what happened is not serious. And here we are at the moment I wanted to talk about. The whole point of this video. I have talked about how important the constant dialogue of this game is. About how even if this game gets very emotional, they don't ever really acknowledge it in dialogue. And how this game changes the status quo constantly and puts the characters in situations you would never think they would find themselves in. The combination of all of this is right here, in this moment of silence. Normally, Sam and Max will have a million things to say to each other, but this is not a normal situation for them. So instead of the usual, they do the opposite. They don't say a single word for a couple of very long seconds. They might not talk about what happened, but I think this time they don't need to. Sam always over explains everything. Max always seems like he's not even paying attention to whatever is happening. But this time, Sam doesn't need to explain anything. And Max doesn't need to be reminded of what's happening. They both know. So, neither of them talk. Because they both know. Sam and Max need to tell jokes, need to give exposition, need to over-explain stuff. But they don't need to explain why they care about each other so much. They both know. So, for the first time ever, they don't say anything to each other. And that says more than any word they could ever say. And right after that, they go back to normal. Not because they don't care about what happened, or because they are repressing, but because they are Sam and Max. Their way to heal is by being Sam and Max, which is by talking to each other about nonsense and not really paying attention to the absurdity of the world they live in. But only focusing on one thing, that they are together. And if that's still a fact, they don't really care about anything else. If you have watched this whole video of me ranting about the funny dog and rabbit cartoon characters, thank you so much! And I'm really sorry. This is the first time I ever make a video, so I'm sure it was really messy. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this, and maybe the next one will be a bit better. I hope to see you all soon.